Welcome back to Alpine Garage Sports. Folks, my name is Chris. We are in the garage today. I am your host, and we are coming off of a very tough loss. But do not panic, because at the middle of last year, for those of you bus fans that are around from last year, if I had said that we would have the same record as Alabama and as Notre Dame, you would have said, there's no way. Yes, that's right. We have the same record. We are 3-1. And the only loss that we have is to a top 10 team. So we are not unlike a whole lot of other teams right now that are three and one that lost to a top 10 team. So let's not get too discouraged about this. We knew we were going to lose a game. No one, I don't think anyone thought that we were going to have a perfect season. So you know what, we got it out of the way. It's out of the way, now we can just relax a little bit and not be you know, so worried about that first loss and what it was going to do. We lost and we lost in a very flamboyant fashion. So at that point, let's just, it's, it's a clean slate now. We can start from scratch again, going into USC. But what I want to do is I want to talk about the points that I made in my pregame video because they're relevant to USC and they're relevant to the rest of the schools we're playing. And we need to figure these things out and the coaches know this. So this isn't for the coaches, this is for us. And we need to kind of consolidate this. So I put up a little chalkboard here on the side, and it's going to go through the points that I had for the Oregon game. And if you notice on those, only one of those has been checked off. Now, if you disagree with this, please let me know down in the comments. I want to be pragmatic about this, and, and I want to make sure that we're doing our due diligence, because this is not to knock down our team. This is the same thing coaches do when they break down the game for their players. we got to know where our strengths are and where our weaknesses are. We need to shore up our weaknesses and we need to exploit our strengths. So the first one is control time of possession. So obviously we didn't do that. How can we control the time of possession? We know we like to throw. Shadur is our guy and Shadur is by far the best player on our team. So having the ball in his hands is, is a positive thing. But what I'm talking about are very short passes. Okay, so short passes out to the flat, specifically the crossing routes, the same way that CSU almost beat us. We need to be doing that to other teams as well. Those passes don't take longer than a couple of seconds. And we weren't able to establish that. And then also we weren't able to establish the run. So at this point, we, we did not control the time of possession. In fact, we had 25 minutes to their 35 minutes time of possession. So we had 10 minutes less time of possession. And when you give an extra 10 minutes to a team, an offense like Oregon, they're gonna put points on the board and that's exactly what happened. So I'm not crossing that one off. The second one is establish the run. So this is the one thing that all of us keep saying. And actually in post game, the coaches say it too. We need to establish the run. I, I, I get it, Shadur is our guy and I get it that we want him to have a lot of passing yards. But at some point, we have got to dissolve ourselves into the running game. I also get that everybody says we can't do that because the offensive line won't block. I understand that, guys. We have to still try to do this. You can't just give up a major part of the offense because you don't think we can do it. You're defeating yourself at that point. Maybe our guys are better with the run block than they are with the pass block because you know we're not super great at the pass block. So let's just, let's just get it over with and try to run block. And maybe if we run block, we'll be better at it. If you look at the stats, we had 25 attempts, but you have to take 10 of those attempts out because those were Shadur attempts. And a lot of those were just chalked up to sacks. So we really only had 15 pure running plays from scrimmage. Not a lot, that's, that's not enough. 15 total is not enough. We're gonna go into our running play in just a little bit and we had 40 total rushing yards, and that's with the sacks taken out. Our total net yards was 40 on the run. It was like a 1.6 average. But again, that's with Shooter's losses out of that number. But we did have some bright spots in the run, and we're gonna go into those in here in just a minute. Number three, get the ball. Shadur needs to get the ball out of his hands in two seconds. That was one of the keys to the game. Unfortunately, we didn't do that most of the game, and we ended up with seven sacks. I know that Shadur wants to make things happen, and there was a stat that I, I talked about in a previous video where 50% of Shador's 1,200 yards was made on the run. It's flushed out of the pocket. 
And so he's really good at that. But after about the first two sacks, we should have realized that Oregon is not gonna allow that to happen. They're way too fast. They're closing the pocket in and just crushing Shadur. At that point, he needs to throw that ball away. And I know it's gonna hurt the passing stat. It's better than taking the sack and potentially injuring the quarterback. So going forward, we gotta get the ball out of this hands in two seconds. It's gotta be a really fast, either a fast throw, a fast screen, or it needs to be a running play. If we're gonna get past some of these teams, like USC that are coming up that have a fantastic front four. Number four was crossing routes. We had 159 yards passing and we did have some crossing routes, but I don't think we had enough. Like we didn't try to establish that. And as soon as we caught the ball, they were on top of us. They did a really good job wrapping up and getting us down. Shooter was 22 for 33, so that's 70%, so not bad. So his efficiency is there. Shadur did what he was supposed to do from that standpoint as he was accurate he did not make any mistakes and throw an interception so there's a positive there when you pull some positives out and that's definitely a positive number five was the tight end plan i was thinking that we had so much success in the last part of the game versus CSU with our tight end that we would do that more often but we only targeted Michael Harrison three times i don't think that was enough and he averaged over seven yards per catch so that could have been a bigger part of the game plan if we had made it a bigger part of the game plan, but we didn't. Number six, set the edge. Well, they had 240 yards in rushing, and although they did exploit us through tackle some, they almost completely took out our edges. Our edges did have some good plays, but overall they were able to run on us for an average of 6.3 yards per carry. So at this point, I don't think we set the edge there. Number seven, the big one, don't let Franklin, don't let Troy Franklin, their big stud receiver, past us don't let them pass the last line of defense well i hate to tell you this folks if you didn't know the name franklin going into it even though i called it out going into the game you do know it now he had eight catches for 126 yards his average was 15.8 yards per catch and he scored two touchdowns did we let franklin pass us yeah we, we let franklin pass us and and this is probably the one area where travis but by, by travis being out probably hurt us a little bit was because we definitely would have had him on Troy. We could have cut down some of those big plays by Franklin. Eight, wrap up on tackles. We did not wrap up on the tackles. We were trying to hit the player down in a lot of cases, and these guys are not only strong, but they spin off, they have really good feet, they have a good low center of gravity, and they were not having that at all. If you don't wrap up, if we don't wrap up going forward, and I'm gonna say this as a point, if we do not wrap up going forward, I don't know where did classic wrap up tackling go? Where did it go? I don't see it a lot anymore. And I've always wondered that. I know it probably potentially causes arm injuries and stuff like that, potentially, I don't know. But we don't seem to be wrapping them up. And they ran on us, took on a lot of yardage after the first hit. So you can tell that we're not wrapping up the way that we should. Play clean on penalty. Oregon was 119th in the country coming in for penalties. Well, we, we beat them in the penalty game. We had 12 penalties for 106 yards. Did we play a clean game? No. In fact, here is a stat that I want you to look at. But in every game that we've played so far, we have had more penalties and more yards taking off. Every single game. And it's, and it's starting to almost become exponential at this point. I don't know what causes that. But I definitely think the coaches should look at that and figure out, you know, we had a lot of offensive holds. And I know that we were getting frustrated on the offensive line because Shador kept getting sacked. And the last one, number 10, fourth quarter rally. And although, I'm gonna check that one off, okay? Because we did not rally back and win the game. But we held Oregon to zero points and we scored a touchdown. Now we missed the extra point and they had their second team in. That stat still plays out. We still did better in the fourth quarter than we did the entire game. And that is something that has happened now in four games. So we know the fourth quarter is our quarter. If we can do a little bit better job on these first nine points that are on this list, if we can do a better job with those, then that fourth quarter rally is going to mean more. But we gotta start checking off more of these boxes. Now again, Guys, I am not being hard on CU. I, I am as CU as CU gets. And I love Coach Prime as much as anybody else. Look at my license plate if you don't believe that. But we have got to be self-critical and we have to know where our weaknesses are in order to fix those. And I'm telling you, there's more than just this, but these are the keys. If we can fix these, we can be more competitive against teams like USC and Utah coming up. Now we're gonna break these out a little bit more this week because I've also got really juicy stuff 
about other coaches and how they perceive us, they perceive us the same way we perceive ourselves. Now a few positives. So we had 25 defensive players make tackles. The reason why I think this is a big deal is because it's game experience. We've, we, we wrote, we're rotating a lot of players in and they're making tackles. It's not just one or two people that are carrying the defense. They're doing it as a group. As a group, they're playing pretty well as far as everybody's pitching in. That's a big one. Juju Mitchell is another one. He had the most tackles in this game again. This is not the first game that he's had the most tackles. He had 10 tackles. So Juju, bringing him in late, has actually made a big impression on our defense. Hankerson ran five times. He had an average of 6.2 yards per carry, guys. Now, a lot of that was on one carry, but that's what the running game is. You're not going to run seven yards every single time you touch the ball, but you got to run it enough to where you can get that breakout. And Hank got that, and he averaged 6.2 yards per carry, guys. That's stellar. That's what the entire Oregon team racked up was like 6.3 yards per carry. So that shows you, that little slice shows you that the running game can work if we stick to it, but it only ran five times. Dylan Edwards had a seven-yard average, and Savion Wilkerson only won one time, but he ran for seven yards. He had a seven-yard average. So when we decide to run the ball, it actually works. Alto finally came in at the very end, and he had five runs. And my perception was is that he had a, a pretty good game. But his average was only 3.4 yards per carry. But you can also tell he's a little tentative in his running as well. So we, he just needs to get a little bit more game experience and, and feel like he can do this. And, and we'll get that those averages way up again. But I'm going to take that as a slice. Our running game was a positive, guys. It was a positive. For the times that we ran, we actually did something with the ball. Javon Antonio, 14 yards per catch. Welcome to the team, Javon. I am so glad you're here. That's an awesome stat. And Shadur had a 70% accuracy. So you can't, that can't be understated. We can say that he had a, a not as good a game as he had had before. And his passer rating was only 120 but his accuracy at 70%, that's what we need to win these games, and it was there. If you take those seven sacks away, that seven more attempts that he could have had, 70%, he probably would have made you know, five of those catches, and at our average of almost 10 yards per catch, that's 70 extra yards. So I'm gonna say that Shadur was a positive in this game. That is a wrap from Alpine Garage Sports. I'm gonna break this way more down than this. I just wanted to get this out today so that you had it. These are the building blocks to be able to play with the big boys this year. And if we can figure these out, if the coaches and the players can figure these out, I believe we can beat anybody on any given day. We will see you in the next video. And if you haven't already heard, we here.